Celtics at Tully Stadium. We are deep into the heart of the 1993 playoffs. Bud Thomas along with Otis Mack. These are two teams that have gotten here by slightly different paths. Of course, Side Creek, you don't really need to talk about that. We saw them last week win a squeaker over Yates, 17-14. What a game that was. The Elsick Rams coming from District 17-5A lost their first two games of the season, something they have not done in the 10 years that Mike Seba has been head coach. They bounced back, though, went 6-2 and two in the last eight games. They're in the playoffs once again for the fourth straight season. Two teams that share something more in common than just the color of their uniforms. Yes, yeah, so you're looking at two veteran teams, but two that run the two back set and also two excellent coaches. The one thing that happened with Side Creek last week, they did the game and actually they won the game in the trenches. They beat Yates where they had their strength in the offensive line. It was amazing because something that no one anticipated and Side Creek did the things that it takes to win a ball game. Elsick, a team on transition, a team that has tripped up early in the season. Coach Mike Seba, one of the best coaches in the city of Houston, got the team back together and now they're rolling and I tell you, peaking at the right time and that time is the playoff time. A couple of veteran coaches, of course, Mike Seba for Elsick and Les Kenning for the undefeated Cy Creek Cougars. <coughs> Excuse me. The Elsick Rams had an awful lot stacked against them as the season got underway. Mike Seba underwent a transition of his own in the offseason. They started off the season with fumbleitis, lost their first two games, then bounced back. They have a sophomore. He's their number one runner, a thousand yard runner on the season. He's Ryan Lewis. On the other side of the ball, Warren McNulty, holy cow, we saw him last week. Yes, and he looked outstanding, bud, because that offensive line, they were mowing people down, and McNulty did the rest. Went over 100 yards last week, and I tell you, it could again happen tonight, because one thing that's going to happen, Elsa is going to run into the strength of the Side Creek team, and that is the running offense. They don't pass the ball that much. No one passes that much in, what, 17? 5A, so it'll be an interesting ball game. If they can move the ball, Elsa, it'll be a, it'll be a very interesting ball game. Well, the defenses are probably statistically even. The offensive edge might go to Side Creek. What does it mean? Nothing, really, except for what happens after the kickoff tonight on Sunday Night Sports. Cy Creek kicks off to Elsa, and we are underway. A couple of gives to the stud sophomore, Ryan Lewis, and it's third down and six for Elsick from their own 30-yard line. Playing for all the marbles behind quarterback Harold Brent. Fake to Lewis. Brent back to pass. Lucky that one was not picked off by Richard Mays. Mays had great coverage. Well, Elsick's bread and butter is the run. They run the option an awful lot, and they've had the backs to do it over the last five years or so. Off. 
Hunt into the win. John Topolsky up near midfield. I believe he actually got just into Elsie territory. And once again, just like last week, Cy Creek starts off with excellent field position. Yes, they do. And I tell you, one key factor, if the offensive line plays anywhere close to the way they did last night, it will be a tough, tough game for Elsick tonight. Mark Cogden is the quarterback. What a game he had against Yates. Warren McNulty is the deep back. Ty Gilbert is the up back. Two-step drop and a flip out into the flats. Complete to Brian McLoon. Excuse me, he is hammered by Tarek Smith, number 24, the 5'9 junior for the Elsick Rams. We're out on the west side of town, Tully Stadium. A decidedly less attended Tully Stadium than last week when the biggest crowd in 22 years saw the Cycrete Cougars defeat Yates 17-14 in one of the great games in the season. Cogdale gets it to McNulty, finds a lane, still on his feet, first down. And just as we thought, bud, the one tough thing about the Side Creek Cougars is that offensive line, and again, they show their power and strength as they go up the right side. And a nice run by the running back, McNulty. Well, I better get my apologies out of the way early for my hack. I'm working on a hopefully relatively mild head cold, so that's why I'm coughing. So, hey, sorry. Blame Mother Nature. From the eye. McNulty, left side. Boy, that guy knows where to find daylight. Yes, he does, and there was a nice seam on the left side of the offensive line there that he found and made the best of it. One thing that's happening is that the offensive line, again, they're making the holes, and McNulty is taking advantage of the opportunities that he has in front of him. Side break with a considerable wind advantage here in the first quarter. This is the Cougars' first possession. If you're just tuning in, the Rams went three and out. Yes, and that was a quick three and out. Side Creek playing with a lot of confidence at this time. Gibbs in motion. McNulty hammered in the backfield by Joe Abrego. He is one of the hosses of the Elsick Ram defense. Yes, the big 240-pound defensive tackle hammered him in the backfield. Elsick had the number one defense in the area last season. Gave up an average of 134 yards a game. And guess what their average was this year? 134 yards a game. I tell you, defense is something that's tradition. Cogdell's going to pass if he has time. Lucky to get that one off. <laughs> Intended for his offensive tackle. <laughs> I think number 65, Todd Bailey. Luckily, Bailey tried to field it with his uh, backside and fell incomplete. Yes, I think they were trying to set up a screen to the right side to McNulty. But the pressure from the Elsick defense did not give him a chance to get that play or uh, have a chance to see it develop. Well, perhaps the stiff northerly wind is keeping these offenses cold here in the opening moments. As temperature is expected to drop down to 42 this evening. And we'll know probably as soon as anybody with the elements that we're feeling tonight. There's a look at the Cy Creek side of the stadium. This time the Cougars are on the west side of Tully Stadium, the home side, wearing their home blue and punting here on fourth down and eight. Actually, I believe they're going to try field goal, but they're going to try field goal. Indeed, here. they are. And it looks what it, oh, we have about 40, 48 yards. Kevin Ward, he had, along with most of his teammates, a heck of a game last week, and he gets it blocked. That's a live ball. Number 24 picks it up for the Elsa Grand. It's Derek number Smith. 56, Derek Manley with the block. So three comes up empty-handed on their opening possession. And we see the defenses exerting themselves during the early going. Yes, 
Delta Graham, no slouch when he comes to the defensive end, as he said earlier, but averaging 134 yards on the defensive side of the ball. That's tough. That's tough for any team to go against. And they are indeed a veteran team, one that's used to winning. Delta comes out in the eye behind Harold Brent. Give it to the up back, Kevin Washington. Yes, Washington last year was an all-district linebacker moved over to the def to the offensive side to the fullback position running for about 566 yards this year major change when you come from linebacker to fullback he got about a yard second and nine Bader in motion Ryan Lewis goes nowhere. Heath McWilliams made the initial stop. Of course, we remember Heath McWilliams from last week when he dropped that fake punt. Yes, Could have been is. six. I tell you, just an unbelievable game by the Side Creek Cougars last week in the win over Yates. And they are playing with a tremendous amount of confidence. As you can see it on the field, these guys are ready to play. 74 is Frederick Stacy, 265 pound senior. The Rams with a pretty beefy offensive line. And the Rams with the timeout. Well, the Side Creek Cougars, after last week's dramatic victory, solid dramatic victory over Yates, many feel is probably the number one seed in region three yes i would say so bud because when you look at the confidence that this team is playing with you never bet against an undefeated team and when you have a guy on the sidelines head coach les caney one of the best also in the city and the state 34 years of head coaching experience you can't count these guys out at any time and i would not be surprised if you see the side creek team in the finals well, the Cougars really showed me a lot last week as they neutralized one of the Yates Lions' strengths, which is their lines, plural, on both sides of the ball. And they contained another dangerous part of the Yates' offense, which was their passing game. Yes, I tell you, Yates had one of the most prolific offenses and defenses in the city of Houston and also in the state of Texas, effectively neutralized by the Side Creek offense and defensive side. Direct snap to Harold Brent. On the scramble, has to get past the 40-yard line. He'll go down at the 40 and be short by about a yard and a half. It appears early on, Bud, that this is going to be a defensive struggle as they have two excellent defenses here, which match up actually pretty well when it comes to the defensive side. The key factor is whether or not Elsick will be successful in stopping that running game of the Side Creek Cougars. Looks like Brent is still on the ground. He looked a little limp as he hit the 40-yard line, then he rolled forward. That could be a major blow to the Elsick Rams this early in the ball game. Well, the Rams are not known for that passing attack with the quarterback passing for 861 yards this year. Running is the real key to their offense. So it will be critical that they not lose their quarterback early in the ball game. There's Mike Seba in front of the four of the 40-yard line. He had retired at one point in the offseason, and he decided, eh, I'll go ahead and come back. Take, Take another look here at the injury. That's Harold Brent. Well, it looks like he may have twisted like a knee or an ankle. just took a blow right in the, uh, right kind of in the hip pocket there. Yes. That's one thing about the AstroTurf, it does not give one of the things that the professional players it only takes. The most about. It only takes. Well, Brent clearly favoring his left leg. That looked to be where he took that blow in the left hip pocket. That's something that could change the odds of this game early on. No question about it. Mike Seba, the head coach for Elsick, felt his team could have been six and three. Or I should say seven and three, eight and two, nine and one, even. He was quoted in the paper this week. However, they were six and four, lucky to get in the playoffs. 
And the tough thing about it, they fumbled themselves out of several ball games in a big hit. Yowza, Larry Burton comes swooping in from nowhere to nail John Sapolsky. And the Cougars will open up only from their own 31-yard line. And I tell you, the one key thing that you can't overlook, bud, in the playoffs during the season, special teams play. And with two coaches, the caliber of the two that we have on the sidelines, I think you're going to see some outstanding special teams play throughout this ball game. Cougars on first down. McLoon in motion. Back to McNulty. Open over the middle. Oh! It hit him in the wrong place again, bud. But right in the hand. The man who had so many clutch catches last week against Gates looked like he might have had that one, but it was tipped at the last minute. Yes, I tell you, it only takes a flash in the face to make you miss or miss your concentration. He was just so open. That's one play that he'll replay for the rest of the game and more likely for the rest of his life. Well, he flew by the free safety, Larry Burton. Second down. Gilbert in the slot, top of your screen. McNulty. Number four. in the background by Abrego. Big play number two for the big senior. And as he said earlier, but this Elsick defense only allowed 134 yards a game for the last two years. They know how to play defense. And if they're going to stay in this ball game, they're going to have to stop this running attack. Well, it took Creek a little while to get on track last week. <laughs> they're going the wrong way right now. It's third down and 13. And I tell you, there's one play. Gibbs. Yeah. There's one play that they wish they could have back. And that was the one on the first down. The number 16 that was dropped earlier. Well, Ted Mercer had a couple of steps on the free safety. But Larry Burton got his hands on it. Big break for the Helsic Rams. Could easily be 7-0 right now. Four sacks punt is a good one. It'll bounce at the 25, roll inside the five. And be down at the four yard line. By Clay Wiederholm. Well, number 80, Brad West, did the one thing that coaches hate to see. And that is to see a punt hit the ground. Well, that's a tough call to make. He was standing at his own, uh, just inside his own 25 with the wind to his face. You can see where a, a, a receiver uh, would figure that the ball might roll into the end zone. But generally, when you're not far out of the end zone, you're supposed to catch it. Yeah, you are. And I tell you, he kicked that ball from their own 28-yard line down to the five. Huge punt. Well, the Rams in a hole. For possession number three. They give it to the sophomore who gets it out past the five. Pick up of maybe two. Ryan Lewis, a thousand yard plus rusher, actually a 1300 yard plus rusher in the regular season as a sophomore. Where does Elsa keep getting all these stud running backs? I tell you, I don't know, but they continue to pop up each and every year. And this running back, Coach Siebert said, had more speed than anyone that he's had, and he's had some outstanding running backs throughout the years. Minutes, excuse me, Otis, four and a half minutes to go, first period. No score. Both teams still getting warmed up, figuratively and literally. Lewis gets the call again. Scott Keyes, the sophomore, is in their quarterback in relief of Harold Brent, who took a helmet right on his left hip pocket the last possession. Yes, and it looks like it's going to be a chess game when it comes to the running offense and running defense. Elsick doing the one thing that Side Creek does best is play against a run. I believe they only allowed, what, 179 yards per game this year, but an outstanding defense on the Side Creek side of the ball. These teams are very evenly matched. It would be hard to tell from their records. The only real edge, and it's not a big edge that I can perceive, is probably the passing game of Side Creek. 
a little bit better at the outset than Elsa, and especially with a sophomore quarterback in there for the Rams. Yes, it's going to have a, a tremendous effect on the way this ball game carries out. Because the quarterback for the Side Creek Cougars, number 12, Chad Orsak, is a pretty good passer. Well, this Cougar defense really contained the previously lethal offensive combination for Yates of Sean Porter and Brady Bob. Bob had some unbelievable catches, but then again, that's his job. No rhyme intended. Now facing a sophomore quarterback, yeah, I tell you what, the front seven for the Cougar defense probably licking their chops right now. Yes, I'd say so, and I had a mistake there. The quarterback, Mark Hog Hoggill, for the Side Creek Cougars is a very good passer there, the junior. will be back next year. On third down, give it to Lewis. Picks his hole, cuts back inside, nothing there. He may have picked up a yard. He needed six. It'll be another punt for the Elsick Rams. And I tell you, they're going to have to go to the sideline and regroup here on the Elsick side of the ball because the running game is just not working. And bringing in a new quarterback, a sophomore, in a pressure-packed game like this can make a huge impact on how this game is going to play out. Well, the Cougar faithful are out in force for the second straight week. A little bit thinner over yonder on the Elsick side. It's not quite the crowd that we had last week. Well, the Cougars go for the return. Topolsky inside the 35-yard line. Well, you know, it's, it's special teams play like that that makes Les Kenning's job pretty easy. Yes, it does, and I tell you, Fills the ball on the 40-yard line their own and takes it down another six yards. So they're sitting in excellent field position. And they've got the wind at their backs on top of that. 2.48 to go, first period, no score. Been a defensive battle so far. Only one first down. Gilbert Nothing tries doing. to sidestep the pursuit, trips himself, lost a yard. And I tell you, you're going to see Coggill probably go to the air again and take advantage of the wind these last two minutes of the ball game. He is a pretty good passer, and he looked extremely well on that long pass that could have been an easy six points earlier in the ball game. Second down, 11. Coggill. How he got out of that, we'll never know. Manages to gain maybe half a yard before he is hauled down from behind by Erwin Gonzalez, number 60. And he kept them in the game last week with some unbelievable scrambles for first downs against the Yates Lions when you thought nothing doing. All of a sudden, he popped seven, eight, ten yards and bring them out of a hole. Well, they're in a hole now, third and 11. McNulty off the draw, he's got some daylight, but he's tripped up by, guess who? Joe Abrego, big play number three in the backfield. That guy's pretty good. Yes, he is, and I tell you, this Elsa Graham defensive effort is nothing to sneeze at. I tell you, they're a good defensive ball team. They are a team that has prided themselves on defense. One thing he said earlier about Coach Mike Siva deciding to step away from the game and coming back is something that's very tough to get out of your blood. Well, why not go for it on fourth down? You're in their territory, got the wind at your back, Cogdill, time! Might have forced that ball a little bit. Heck of a play defensively by Sean Armistead as he cut in front of Ted Mercer who flashed open just briefly. Yes, he did, but in, indeed again. Outstanding defensive play in the secondary for the Elsick Rams. Well, I tell you, I like to see a guy go for it on fourth down and 10. But then again, you know, you're in their territory. You've got about a 20 mile an hour wind at your back. Why not? Why not do it? And you're out of field goal range. It's going to be tough to get it over the top of that de big defensive line that Elsick has. Go for it. First down, the up back picks up five yards. That's Kevin Washington. Well, you know, I don't think anything would intimidate the side green Cooper defense, but uh, 
uh, a former all district linebacker coming at you with the ball as blocked is in front of him not a real friendly sight not at all and i tell you one thing that i'm still looking to see happen is to see lewis get a little breathing room in that sec and get into that secondary for the elsa graham the running back the sophomore brad west is split to the bottom of your screen we've got flags and whistles play stops <laughs> And that's going to be a factor throughout this game. Washington, whoa, yank down, hello. Yes, and once again, that Side Creek defensive effort. It looks like it's shaping up to be a big defensive battle this afternoon, but it's Ryan. going to be a tough one on both sides of the ball. Ryan Fay, the nose tackle, what a stop. Good way to separate a shoulder there, guy. Now it looks like he's a linebacker. All right, fine. And as well, they say, defense wins the ball game. First quarter's history, no score. We'll be right back. What's the big deal? I just don't feel like it. <sighs> Mike. I'm not going to wear it. Look, it's just safer. What's the matter? Let's not risk it. Please. For me. All right. Don't take any chances. Wear a safety belt and be safe. Well, Ryan Lewis picked up 15 yards so quick, we didn't even see it to open up the second period. And just as I said earlier, but a chance to get Ryan Lewis into open, and they did that on just a little bit of a razzle-dazzle reverse there to get him open. Nice run by the sophomore running back. That's the first first down of the game for the Elsick offense, and they are in Side Creek territory. First down 10 from the Cougar 44. A fake and a fumble. Creek. Turnover number one. And as evenly matched as these two teams are, just like last week, turnovers is usually what the game turns on. Yes, and the one thing that Elsick, a little excitement out on the field right now, the two players on the team get a little bit excited about this ball game number 80 well Washington had some big time trouble getting that handoff from the sophomore quarterback Scott Keys never had it in his grasp bounced off his shoulder pad take another look here he turned and then yes, boom, he never had his hands on the ball there he had it a little high it was over his head at the time and it's a fine hit by one of the side side quick defensive linemen it caused him to separate from the ball Go the other way. Freak with the ball. Two receivers, bottom of your screen. McNulty looking for a wall. Pursuit. Boy, the pursuit was there, but McNulty just ran right around it. Yes, he did. But I tell you, when you have a team that pursues as fast as this Elsick defense, allowing 134 yards a game, they close that gap quickly. 54 Antonio Rodriguez was out there in perfect position defensively coming out there from his offensive line <laughs> offensive linebacker hello defensive linebacker take two Rodriguez came out there from his linebacker position and got run around end of story thank you yeah we're actually McNulty has the Jets to do it Cogdell is first keeper of the game he was deadly last week and this is why a big run by the junior quarterback. Well, when the, when Creek really needed to have it last week, Cogdill's delivered either with his arm or carrying the ball. What a stud, and he is slow getting up. I think he fell on the ball, but he'll bounce right back up. That's just one player that the Side Creek Cougars cannot afford to lose. He is the leader of this offense. Taking a look here. Just Feels the flow. Whoa, a couple of jock straps along the way, too. Yes, he did. He left a couple of people standing, wondering what's going on. Inside the Ram 30. Linus Rouge is the 29. First and 10. 
This time we go Twins right. Gilbert to the right, McDalty. McNulty looks for a hole, picks up about two. Abrego hauls him down, amongst others. Yes, he used a little fancy spin move there to peel off a couple of yards, but this is a tough Rams defense. Again, number 40 all over him. The Rams with five of their former players playing Division I college football right now. That is the most in the greater Houston area. You know, if you look on the other side of the ball, the Side Creek Cougars have just a bevy of players playing major college football at this time also. Three backs, delay, McNulty goes nowhere. This time Lawson Cooper was there to make the stop, but that hole closed right now. Yes, it did. And I tell you, that Elsa Graham's defense, again, these guys are here to play. Well, it's starting to get tougher. This game is being played at a rapid pace indeed. Two running teams. Elson does not have much of an established passing game. Creek not likely to throw into a 25 mile an hour win. Cogdill on the keeper, here he goes again. This time he'll be short by about two yards. But I tell you one thing, he does make the game interesting, doesn't he, bud? He, he scrambles extremely well. Has good field vision. And he's only a junior. Look out. It's one thing that the Side Creek fans and also Coach Painting can look forward to next year. And I believe they're going to go for it. And the Cougars go for it on fourth down again. This time fourth down and three. And the faithful are on their feet here at Tully. Seven guys on the line of scrimmage defensively. Cogdill won't get it. And I tell you, that was a huge stop, bud, because when you look at the playoffs, you look at first downs, and you look at penetration, they did not get the ball across the 20-yard line. Huge defensive play. Well, they so far, this game has been played between the 30s, just about. Yes, it has. All night. key fact is how well the Elsick Rams can diversify their offense and get something going here. Eight and a half minutes to go, first half. Scott Key, sophomore quarterback in relief of Harold Brent. Brent still on the sideline. Ryan Lewis gets up ahead of steam, picks up five on first down. I'll tell you, another small, quick running back just like Khalif Muhammad last year. Ryan Lewis, right up the middle. Two sophomores now leading this offense for the Elsick Rams. The quarterback, ah, and the running back for the Elsick Rams. Elsick is the number one school enrollment-wise in District 17 5A. Right across the football field, literally from its sister school, Hastings, who did not make it into the playoffs this year. Lewis, that's first down number two for Elsick. The young man did not rush for 1,300 plus yards this year for nothing. Showing a little bit of the flash and why he's being touted so highly by his coach, Mike Stevens. Well, we saw Yates have some luck in the first half of last week's game going right up the middle against Cy Creek. Creek was very effective in the second half of shutting all that off. Yes, they were. And the one thing they had a chance to sit down, do a little chalk talk, take a look at what they could see from the press box here, and effectively shut it down for the Yates Lions last week. Rams off the quick count. Goes pretty much nowhere. Aaron Thielhorn with the stop for the Cougars. Celtic Rams, I believe, having only the second first down of the ball game <laughs> during this drive. Say that three times fast. I won't try it. Gain of one on first down. There's the southbound look from high atop Tully Stadium. And the business end of Ryan Lewis, who gets the call on second down. 
They'll be stopped shy of the 45, bring up third down and moderately long. You know, Elsick has only attempted to pass the ball one time this whole evening. And that was the one play where their quarterback was injured. They're going to have to do something in order to kind of open this game up. And they do have the win at this time. Well, the Cougars, a team on a mission, avenging last year's opening round playoff loss to Yates by beating Yates in the opening round of this year's playoffs. Slow developing play. That's going to be incomplete. As Kevin Washington could not hang on, that ball thrown right in a dangerous place, right in his numbers. Yes, right in the numbers there, right in the old bread basket. It just could not hold on to the pass. Kelly was almost fumbled into the hands of a side creek defender. So Scott Keyes, the sophomore quarterback, dealt a small dose of frustration here in the second quarter. And that he was, made a good play to, to get away from the rush, too. Yes, he did. And it actually, that was a pretty good-looking pass play, as we see again, right into the hands. Oh, well, okay. It wasn't in his numbers. It was right on his belt. Same diff. Boom. That's with the wind. Topolsky will call for a fair catch, run out of the oh, way. Oh, and a great punt. The ball is on the three-yard line. Well, you can see him way over yonder. And so, <laughs> this is something we did. Well, I think Creek started one drive last week inside their own five. And they scored on that drive. Yes, I they think. scored on it. Well, they played well when their back is against the wall. But again, this is a different defense. Uh, they also Rams. And one team that plays extremely well together as a unit. Still no score. 5.45 to go first half. Freak with the ball. And Ogdale gets it to the up back. Gilbert, who is pasted. Number 85, Lawson Cooper. The big 6'1", 225-pound linebacker, junior, for the Elsa Grant. Well, this is shaping up to be um, a low-scoring game at least. And this one may go down to penetrations or maybe even first downs. The way things are looking right now, you have two excellent defensive ball clubs out there. I would give Cy Creek the advantage when it comes to the offensive side with the diversity in the backfield and passing of the quarterback and running back. McNulty called down by Warwick Holdman. But I tell you one thing, this Elsa defense Looking awfully good. It's amazing. It looks like reversals of fortune here when you look at the punt that placed Elsick early on into the deep hole. And now the same thing for the Side Creek Cougars. Well, this game may very well come down to the kickers, which means that whoever has the choice in the second half might have the edge. Yes. And who takes the win? Like I said, win is going to be extremely important in that fourth quarter. Coach Mike Siebel relishes the role of being the underdog. And that was something that he wanted to be said throughout this whole week. Yeah, of course, uh, underdog is a role that Mike Siebel's Elsie Rams have not borne over the last three or four years. They had an excellent team last year that they thought would make the finals in the state playoffs. District champion, as a matter of fact. But still. The A-Leaf schools had dominated play in District 17-5A until this season when Lamar Consolidated finally broke the A-Leaf grip on the top notch at District 17-5A, losing only one game in the regular season. Yes, but true to form. Coach Mike Siva had the troops ready last week when they met Lamar in the playoffs and convincingly beat them. 24 to 7. That's a Lamar team that whipped Willerich at their place in the third week of the season. All right. We've got a few excited fans we've, here on the Side Creek side. We've, we've, we've got the flesh crew 
running mid-range on the creek side of the field. Oh, now they're camped out behind the band. Ah, that's typical. Windbreak, probably. No, oh, now they're sitting down. That's no fun. Third down and 10. McNulty tries to turn the corner, goes. Still on his feet. Wow. Well, he won't pick up the first down, but he ought to get a couple of brownie points for the effort. Yes, because he made something out of nothing out of something out of nothing on that play. Eugene Armstrong there for Elsick. And I don't think Creek is going to go for it on fourth down from inside their own team. I don't think so, bud. And I tell you, the one thing that we saw last week on the replay here. Oh, oh nice crack block. Showing a little flash here. Look at the second effort. As he gets six, seven yards out of that play. McNulty, one tough hombre. Orsak's kick hits at the 35, rolls past midfield. It will be down at the 49-yard line. Easily the best initial field position for Elsick. We'll have to see what they can do with it. That's the one thing that you see the defense here for the Elsick Rams. They're not doing the things that Yates did last week, and that was over pursuing the play, where McNulty just totally took advantage of the runs back across the green. This team plays together as, as well as anyone I've seen all year as a unit on the defensive side. Excellent it, point. It is going to be a tough ball game tonight. Dominic Brown, the ball carrier. I'm not real sure how the line of scrimmage went from the Elsick 49 to the Side Creek 46. Still trying to figure that one out, but better minds than mine are down on the field, thankfully. Yes, I'm just a bit confused on that one myself. Well, we'll go with the flow. Second and ten. Three minutes to go. First half. Twins, bottom of your screen. Ryan Lewis tripped up after he gains about two. Not a lot of offensive firepower this evening on either side. A few flashes here and there, but the defenses are dominating this ball game. Much more subdued atmosphere here in Tully than last week. The biggest, crowd in, biggest crowd in basically a generation. Yes. Yeah, crammed into to Tully Stadium. Yes. Tied up traffic at the Derry Ashford intersection for about five hours. That should be a flag. It will be. That'll be illegal procedure. Like a little bit of movement on the left side of the Elsa Rams offense. They're moving back. And indeed, it is a procedure against basically the left side of the Elsa offensive line. You know, we mentioned just before halftime last week that Cy Creek at that point in last week's game was exactly where they wanted them to be. They could not afford to fall behind. And in a perfect world, they'd take a lead into the locker room, which they did. Elsick, all they have to do is stay even. And that's it. And I tell you, a break here, a break there. Well, that's not the kind of break that we were talking about. Not at all. Looked like a busted play. Everybody went the wrong way but the quarterback. Uh, at least that's what the quarterback will tell you. On his side. <laughs> or I'd say in his defense of that play. You can expect a few busted plays when you have a sophomore quarterback the first time in a playoff game. But to be, to be fair, though, Scott Keyes has looked pretty smooth out there. He's worked his way out of a couple of pressure situations through a perfect pass that got dropped. Yes, that stalled the drive there that looked pretty good. Oh, that, well, could have been a flag. No flag called. Topolsky. There it is now. The flag goes up late. And I believe... They may have a little bit of roughing on the punter because there was a late flag. <laughs> well, that is roughing the kicker in name only. Uh, Frederick Stacy, one of the few 265-pound punters in the United States of America. You, you need a Mack truck to rough that guy up. Yeah, I think you can safely say that. <laughs> 265 pounds, it's going to be hard to rough him up. But if he was, he'll take the penalty. All right. Oh, great. We get the view from, from the business angle. 
Well, ooh, well, hard to tell. Beautiful punt. There goes the flag. You saw it right there. Topolsky trying to find some room. But apparently no dice because Cy Creek is coming up to the offensive side of the ball. Well, the flag is waved off. If anybody at home knows why, let us know. 524-7700. That's our phone number. We'd love to know on that particular one. They never tell us anything. Great from their own 29. McLoon in motion. McNulty. Turns the corner on his own effort. The pursuit again was there to cut him off, but he stays on his feet. The 5'10 senior running back again, making something out of nothing. This kid's going to play ball for somebody. 42, Warwick Holdman was there, but could not lock up. Well, I tell you, that's one thing Yates could not do last week was seal off the, uh, seal off the corners. Exactly, and that was the demise of the Yates game last week. They could not seal them, and they were, he was actually able to get back on the cutbacks across well, the game. Give it to the same guy. This time falls back, loses three. And if you can learn anything from film study, I believe Coach Mike Sieber has because there are no cutbacks on the grain going against these Elsa Rams. They're effectively shutting off all lanes across that field. McNulty does such an excellent job. He has excellent field vision coming out of that backfield and getting a chance to read it out of that eye. They're closing it off for him. Both offensive backfields making their yardage on their own. Pretty much a stalemate at the line of scrimmage. McNulty, maybe two. He needed six. Bring up fourth down as the clock runs out. And I have to down. take my hat off to both defensive sides of the ball because these guys have played their hearts out this first half, and it has been an all-defensive ball game so far. Well, we've got two bands, two more quarters of football, and all the attendant color and pageantry. Don't go away on Sunday Night Sports at halftime from Tully Stadium. Nil, nil, Elsick, Cy Creek. Don't wreck your life. All the way from the sunny southwest side, A-Leaf, Texas, the pride of A-Leaf, the Elsick Ram Marching Band. even at zero first downs even at two total yards Elsick 69 Creek 63 what can you say about that bud two well coached teams very even a big big stand late in the second half for the Elsick Rams when they held Cy Creek from getting a penetration probably one of the key plays in the first half both of the these stud running backs for these two teams showed why they are the stud run running backs for these teams in flashes, although they're working against line play on both sides of the ball. That was largely a stalemate in the first half. Creek gets their hands on the ball first, out past the 20 to the 21 is Steve Gibbs. Yes, and we and also have Creek a question. Gets their hands on the ball into a 25 mile an hour wind to open the second Parked ball. man, and you're in and you're out. You can rise to the level that, that he has. It's really...